Hi guys. Hello. Hey friend. How you guys doing? <laughs> Hi. It's been so long since I just did a sit down. Let's talk about a subject or something or something I'm done or something I want to kind of explain to you kind of video. So here we are. So today for you guys, I thought I would sit down and talk a little bit about how we got binkies or pacifiers or passies or binks or whatever your little one or big one or whoever calls a pacifier, how we got that away from our six year old child. Now, I don't know how I'm gonna title this video, but I have seen a couple of videos in blog posts and Google searches and all those things of like taking pacifiers away. It's a big topic, it's a thing. And I wanna give you a little preface of like what our situation is personally, cause it might not be the same for you. Um, our six year old special needs daughter, she has autism, her name is Ella. If you're not new here, you know that. She had a binky up until two weeks ago. Yes, at six years old. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I've talked about it pretty openly, um, you know. <laughs> It's not my proudest parenting moment, but my child lived, loved, loved her binky, her bink, her passy. She loved it. And we were kind of forced into submission to take it away. I don't even know how we would have ever gotten it away from her otherwise. It was a uh, problematic behavior thing. And passies and binkies and all those things are very, very, very soothing for all kids and babies and a great tool and resource for your little one, especially if you're breastfeeding and you're like sick of them being attached to you constantly or just for like soothing self, like to soothe themselves. That's what our little one used it for. She used it mainly at nighttime to soothe herself to sleep. And she just had um, extensive dental work done, not because of the binky, which we'll get to that, but she had to get extensive dental work done and at risk of getting a dry socket, we had to say, no more binkies, kibosh. She was six years old anyways. We had been talking about it for years to try and get it away from her. And it's finally, we were forced to take it away from her. And honestly, you guys, if this video, anything gives you a little bit of courage or hope that you too can take this pacifier away and survive. Because if you are a passy family, a binky family, or your child is very reliant on a binky at night especially, um, I'm here to tell you, it really wasn't that bad taking it away. What? What? I'm gonna tell you three things that we did that I think really, really did help and hopefully can help you in your taking passy binky away journey. Number one is just do it. Now, here's the thing. We had, we were forced to do this. I really, my kid would probably have a binky across the stage of graduation, you know, at 18 years old if it wasn't for this dental work that we just had done. I would say because my child has special needs, cognitively she wasn't really able to understand why we would take the binky away um, up until this point, honestly. There, you as a parent have to really decide if it is going to be something that is going to be traumatic or, um, if it's something your child can understand so that you can maybe understand or give them a reason as to why you're taking it away and like something great is coming. What we did use for Ella is we said, cause she is very much aware of the tooth fairy and I don't even know if she knows who the tooth fairy is or what it is. All she knows is that tooth fairy equates to gifts. So we said that the tooth fairy um, took her teeth when they pulled them out and they took her binkies too because now she's a big girl. She did not want to be a big girl. She told me multiple times that first night she did not want to be a big girl. She wanted her binky. Um, but I made sure we got very, very preferred items that the Tooth Fairy brought her to replace the binky. And you guys, that worked like a freaking charm. I'm shocked at how well that worked because cognitively didn't really think she'd understand that. But, you know, I got to give the girl credit. She totally understood. And that really, really helped ease the transition of taking them away. So if your child is at the age or you know, able to understand that kind of thing, like you're a big girl or big boy and they're gonna bring you this and take this away, um, that might ease the impact a little bit, but it, you will have a couple nights of struggling and I'm here to tell you, it really didn't last that long, so I would say the really number one tip is find a preferred item, not a binky, and maybe a preferred person, Santa, whoever you need to say came and brought that present in space and to replace that binky, you know, do what you gotta do. You know, this is survival mode. I know how hard it is. I know it's not fun. It sucks. Ha, <laughs> see the pun there? <laughs> it's not a good time and we were super, super stressed about it, but that really did help ease the burden of her binkiness or uh, of wanting a binky. It was such a, oh my gosh, you guys. 
That first night, I literally was Google searching. I'm like, does it break her heart? Is it traumatic? Is she gonna have PTSD? Because my child relied on a binky for six years to fall asleep. Six years at night to fall asleep, she had a binky in her mouth pacifier. That is way too long. Yes, by dental standings and all of the things. But, you know, it is what it is, and it, it, it was what it was, and that is what it, that's it. She had it. So I was. I was so upset. She was like, just like, I want my, she was like, loved it and like wanted it back. And it took everything in my mama heart not to give in. So that is another tip I will say to you. You guys, you're going to take this pacifier away and whether you have a toy or not, it does help. Um, I would say give the toy in the morning after they've slept without the binky, like yay for you. Um, also don't bring the word up a bunch. I've learned that. Don't talk about it. You don't want to be about it. Talk about it at first and then just don't bring it up anymore. Just be like, this is what you have now. But you guys, the first, it's gonna, it's not gonna be a good time. They're gonna want it. They're gonna ask for it. They're going to test you as a parent and say, you know, all the things that they can think of saying to get that preferred item. And it is, you need to stick to your guns, my friend. You need to not give in. You need to not give in. You seriously can't. I couldn't because I didn't want her to get a dry socket. So the thought of her having that much pain is really what stopped me from giving in because it was hard. But you guys, it's going to be hard a little bit. But I will tell you, it only took one or two nights of like her asking for it and she, it's fine. Like she's totally fine without it. She's better without it. She sleeps better without it, which is like, what? I know that's like a wild thought. Like I can't believe, like she'll never sleep or it's gonna be awful. Ella sleeps better now than she did with it. I, we've come to the conclusion it's because she's not searching for it in the night to soothe herself. She's just soothing herself back to sleep, which is a great life skill. Self-soothing is an important thing. <laughs> and I'm really glad that she picked up on it pretty quickly. So if you just stand, stand, stand your ground, stand strong, um, you really, it'll be okay, I promise. I'm not saying that this experience will be for everybody. Maybe it'll take you a week. But what we did do when she would wake up in the night and be a little bit restless is we would gently kind of like go in there and comfort her a bit, but not to the point where she would fall asleep. We would just kind of like comfort her a little bit, tell her, you know, no, 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 the pinkies are all gone. The tooth fairy will bring you this in the morning. And she would kind of ease back into sleep. And honestly, it worked like a dream. So I would not suggest like pacifying your child by like taking the pacifier away and then going in and being the one to put them back to sleep all the way. Just go in there and gently comfort them and then leave the room and let them get themselves to sleep worked like a charm also tip number three that we did use this is a very hippy dippy tip of me but I really feel like it worked um, the day prior to Ella getting all of her dental work done she also got bit by mosquitoes really bad so my husband being the amazing beautiful man that he is he made this uh, coconut oil like lavender mix with one of our young living oils and we rub that on her every single night and she sleeps so, so, so good. I've never been one to topically use oils on Ella just because, I don't know, I just didn't. I used them to make my house smell nice. I'm definitely not here to sell you on oils at all. Not even a bit. Um, that's a preference thing, but it definitely, I feel like, has helped a lot to like help her calm down and everything. And we have been officially two weeks off of Binkies. She does not ask for it anymore. We only had about four or five days of her asking for it. But she ultimately is sleeping so much better without it, you guys. So much better. So like this video, more than anything, maybe it's a few tips or like kind of how we did it a little bit. But I just kind of want to encourage you because I have talked to a lot of you via email, via messages, Facebook, all those things. And I know there's so many of you who are going through the same thing with kids older, younger, the same age of Ella, and you're like, it's it's kind of shameful a little bit. Like, it's not shameful, but it feels like it that our kids are still relying on something like a bottle or a binky at this age. Um, especially as special needs parents, I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is gonna like ruin her mouth. And you know, they say all these things that come with um, having a binky too long, like speech deficit and all those things. We never really experienced that with Ella. Um, who knows, really? But I do know that our kids are way more resilient than we give them credit for for sure. Our kids are so resilient and honestly, she adapted so well. So I think it's more of an us thing than a them thing. I know the thought of taking it and like just adding some extra crazy hardness onto your life or some stress, it's not a fun time. It's not a fun thing to think about doing, but your first step is you gotta do it and actually do it. We've talked about getting rid of binkies for years. Um, now that we actually had to do it, it it really wasn't that bad so i would say like your very first step is just deciding like do it on a weekend um 
try and figure out a way that you can like cognitively explain it to your child to where they would understand or that they're gonna get this for this and just really, really, really stand strong and you can get it away from them, I promise. It's such a hard thing because I myself, this is, you know, fun fact, I was a thumb sucker my entire life. I literally sucked my thumb until I was like 21 years old. I'm not ashamed of it. At this point, like my husband always used to make fun of me. I'd sit in the corner and just like, and rub a soft pillow. So like we all have something, that, you know, that soothes us or that makes us feel good. And um, the thought of taking that away from our little ones can be super scary and hard to think about. But at the end of the day, you guys, we all know what's best. And do you want to put braces on your kids, man? I had braces twice because of my thumb sucking. Twice. It worked, but it's not, you know, ideal. And long term, it's just, it isn't really good for them. So, I mean, if you have any questions or any way that I can help you personally in taking away a pacifier or a binky, you just need encouragement. I hope more than anything, this just encourages you that if we can do it at six years old, six and a half, you can do it. Trust me. Trust me. My kid went on a binky for six years, for goodness sake. Six years. She loved, I told, I remember that first night I was like, she loves it. We're, we're giving her PTSD. It's traumatic. Don't Google. Oh, huge mistake. Save yourself right now. Just don't do it. Um, your kid is not going to have post-traumatic stress disorder from taking away a binky. They're not going to be scarred for life. Quitting cold turkey is not the end of the world. It's actually probably the only way to do it. So if you guys have any questions about this, I just thought I'd share this with you because we've gotten some, so many questions and emails and I'm like trying to encourage you guys and fellow mamas and daddies to, you know, don't be so scared to do it. It is not as hard or as bad as you think it might be. And if you have any specific questions to how we did things with Ella and how it worked and like how we could maybe help you or get you an idea together of how you could help your little one take the binky away, make sure you leave them down below or you can always shoot me an email. My email is in the information in the about section on this page page channel whatever and i hope you guys i hope this helps a little bit it seems super random and you're like what the heck am i watching but hey there's a lot of us out there who have got kids and little ones on pacifiers and bottles still and it's hard to take away and it's hard to make that step to just like get it out of your life and out of your house i don't even have any to show you because i was gonna do a cute thumbnail holding them dude we got the that's the first step get them out of here don't let them in your house throw them away and don't have an option. So I hope that helps. If you guys have any more questions, make sure you leave them down below and we will see you guys in the next video. It'll be a vlog. I love you guys so much and I'll see you on Friday. Have the best day ever.